Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. is bringing restoration my dear to your family and light is touching someone from here to this place this row as I'm seeing the same thing God is doing on this lady God is doing to someone on that row in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy restoration I don't care what the limits are we place the word of God upon your situation and I declare supernatural restoration supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus the Lord is driving away the spirit of death over three families hold on please three families I'm hearing in the spirit three families in the name of Jesus wherever they are you are representing that family I declare Kabo Jabaru Seteke Lakaru Sandalakatai the spirit of death, hell, the grave, we curse you by the power of the highest. We, we set at liberty right now, these families. We extend their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are going to be seated shortly. You see, listen. As a minister of the gospel, your assignment is not just to come and teach. Your assignment is also to be sensitive to the things that God wants to communicate. Are we together now? God is bringing someone at overflow 2 to the realm of the prophetic. Overflow 2 by the roadside. I'm seeing a grace. There is an anointing that is bringing someone into that experience of the prophetic so that you will begin to hear and you will begin to see not like you are hearing, not like you are seeing. It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Just one last prayer and then we're seated. I'm seeing the grace for speed and restoration. That anointing is coming on at least 21 people. I stretch my hands now. Speed. That grace. That anointing. Lord, all those who must enter these dimensions in this season, I activate that grace. Speed. Doesn't matter what you have lost. Doesn't matter what has left you. I release that grace. 
speed, speed. Kabarakato sabare dashia. He baranda shala barakato zabregetikata. Speed. I prophesy. I declare as one sent from the Almighty. Speed to your life. The families that you are representing, I command speed. How forcible are right words. I declare the force of prophecy. Speed. You will marvel at the things that begin to happen. I declare by the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Let's just take two minutes to just pray in the spirit while you are seated. The various ministrations of the spirit. That's why you came. The spirit of God is still blessing people. Hey, Baradu Satya. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are and pray in the spirit. You are receiving something. Kali Barakatosh. Shade Baris Kadebo Shananda Lakata. Ragada Barakata Barakatosh. Entelakas Kabarakatosh. Ke Pregates Kata Likata Brande Gata. Zibara Hasana Malakata Bragete Sikata. It's your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata. Negate preskata likato zasiana hasabrakatosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ilabarada kato shadi adamada. Shada baranda kala praske de balado. Shanda bradege de balada balada bo. Habarada galeba siara balada balada bo. The Lord is still telling me he's bringing speed. I'm doing a quick walk, a quick walk, a quick walk. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me, a quick walk. This is the season of the quick walk. I'm doing a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe. First, that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation. You are immersed in a reality and you step out of it with an evidence that no power, no force, no devil can contest or deny is reality these are not shadows you 
will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold just from the experiences you see God visits you through his word he visits you through his power leave the realm of argument where you come and you are wondering can God touch me can God bless me no it's a deposit of his grace this place is a portal it's an access point to the throne God made it so by his grace and that if you are humble enough to believe and receive just one encounter is enough you don't need to come twice one and it's impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony no no listen if this is your first time coming here i'm telling you it's impossible you will never have to come twice to have a test it doesn't matter you are under a system that is bound by a covenant this is not just something about a man's intention hallelujah lord jesus we thank you for what you have done tonight we declare that forever jesus will be lifted in this place lord more than a man may your people see jesus may they see christ lifted and glorified tonight change our lives by the power of your word in the name of jesus please just sit down everyone I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. joy for morning joy for morning mighty god we thank you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen just help those under the anointing and um, let us get to the word These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God just within these few minutes has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god hallelujah second peter chapter one let's get to the word blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord the lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers i just saw this now in a flash one of the ushers the Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ.
second peter chapter one I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands forever O oh lord your word is settled forever O oh lord your word is settled please sit down i want you to be very sensitive to what god is doing this is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing no this is god birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of God second Peter chapter 1 we start from verse 2 we're reading the first three verses after from verse 2 just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire you know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry. And in the name of Jesus, you will see the hand of God in unusual ways let the sick be healed under your hand let lives let testimonies let testimonies 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 jakata barakata it's like a well of fire from within your spirit opening up a well of fire from within your spirit i shift you to a level of miracles a level of signs 
and wonders. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five, ten minutes of ministration, I know that next week is a miracle service, but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service. There are people whose situations are a matter of life and death. So it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gainsay nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body. This is sickness. Sickness. But in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to give way. Right now, anyone sick here, if there is anything sickness, I sense a healing anointing right now. Sickness. Be healed. Be healed now. Be healed. Please help them. Be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness kabarakatash be healed i bring you the life and the power of jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it lives your life forever in the name of jesus christ the Lord is healing a breast lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises what did he give us exceeding great and precious promises so how did he make us partake us through the promises he left promises that when we access and walk in that reality we will be partakers of that divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss bless your word tonight and in the name of Jesus we pray that you will increase us amen and amen last week I started teaching 
on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth i'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then i want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of god divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love god and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true i took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men remember my teaching yes and that there will always be a demand by satan to give your soul in exchange for material things so it's not just that your soul listen carefully it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies and i gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together when your pocket begins to rise he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down are we together and that has been the system so people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money but in the name of jesus there is a generation of men and women rising by the spirit of god who will prosper even as their souls prosper Amen. and so i told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of tyre satan himself sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth and we're going to look at the second aspect today and i'm just going to talk to you two words basically that will be teaching um, along those lines and then god will grant us grace genesis chapter one please genesis chapter one when god made man he gave a command and the first word that man heard from god according to verse 28 and god blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something i did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful please you need to get it it's very very important because i want to start building from there god is a god of increase god is a god that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful and um when the lord mandated man to be fruitful please leave the scripture there many theologians have taught that what god meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness like have children and replenish the earth i i believe there is a dimension of that but as i began to study this the lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions and that's where i want to start with tonight that there are at least five levels or five areas where god desires the saints to be fruitful write it down please number one the womb or what you call fruitfulness children the womb when god told man be fruitful he meant to be able to carry seed 
up until delivery and by so doing multiply the earth number two the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when god spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman he was speaking to all of these dimensions of man that the womb be fruitful the mind be fruitful the hands be fruitful the mouth be fruitful the spirit be fruitful are we together the fruit of the womb is the child the fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity please write when the womb gives birth you call the child or you call the fruit a child when the mind or your thoughts give birth you call the fruit ideas When the hands give birth, you call the child work or accomplishments. When the mouth gives birth, you call it words. When the spirit gives birth, you call it character. And so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agreed that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where daniel and the three hebrew boys came and said oh king we will not bow we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of christ and even in africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity please write this down there is a difference between value and productivity there is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity value talks of your inherent abilities value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills that means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now 
just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded the world is full of many valuable people but in the face of economic hardship even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need are we together now it is important to be aware of value but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints please write this down productivity is the quality or the ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful i'll take it again productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful never forget this this definition that productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful look up please everyone while value talks of your inherent abilities productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful it is not valuable people who are rewarded it is productive people are we together please you may write this down financial resources will always follow productivity not necessarily value financial resources will always move the direction of productivity productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance the ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity hmm. so god has a system for our prosperity he's a god of increase in spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack into poverty and by so doing distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom and i'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory economic victory is productivity any man any woman any church any organization that is not productive will be poor it's a law please listen carefully any man any woman any church any business any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality Before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive, let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality. Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation it is sin everything god gives men he expects that they increase in the parable of the talent matthew chapter 25 the bible talks about three men who were given talents one five talent listen carefully the other two talents and then the last a talent 
and the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more increased the other one with two went and made two more but the one with one talent returned back and said you are a hard man you reap where you didn't sow and Jesus called him a name he didn't call him lazy man he said you are a wicked and unprofitable that's the word unprofitable there is no gain trusting you wicked and unprofitable servant Africa has been plagued and sadly respectfully so but sadly our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality are we together now so the the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average African and worst of it all to an average believer the subject of productivity is not taught believers we we have been trained to ignore productivity let me tell you I think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something the Bible says give and it will be given to you that's the law it didn't say what you give is what must be given but until you give nothing should be given back to you so if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you it's amazing my brothers and my sisters how many of us many of us even seated here just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed are you getting what I'm saying now productivity so the average person thinks consumption give me let me eat it has finished give me another one let me eat it has finished daddy give me this it has finished productivity we lack this grossly in Africa are we together now yeah. so people collect their salaries and when they collect their salaries the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months they are back because there was no productivity there was money but no productivity are we together now yes productivity is a system of increase in mathematics we have addition we have subtraction we have multiplication and another name for multiplication they say find the product of this and you know that they are talking about multiplication it's a system of increase woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity the days that are here now not the days that are coming will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual we must understand productivity God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son productivity now he has gotten many sons in glory The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have always believes in finishing what you have it doesn't have to be finance anything at all the consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry always run dry a mentality that never thinks increase never thinks addition never thinks multiplication when you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence you become a multiplier factor are we together so your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you something happens in that family and begins to multiply the greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture amazing how you can take a seed look up everybody you plant that seed are we together now and then you watch it that orange seed just give it a little time 
it grows the orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough are you seeing that now yes in spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds it has the stamina and a few months after maturity you begin to see oranges everywhere watch this you will pluck the oranges and after a while it will start again and you will pluck some more and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people the trees were there before they were born yet they will still eat of it that's productivity are we together now no man who is productive becomes poor no matter what babylon wants to do or not no matter what devil no matter what charm what cause productivity is not an idea for success it's a weapon productivity is a weapon a man of god who is productive will never have empty pews a church a ministry that is productive will never go down a business that is productive will never see shame the key is productivity the key is not wishing the key is not sentiments the key is productivity the ability to convert anything small to become big productivity the ability to introduce a multiplier factor i am productive who do i use come I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether what if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life to God whatever it is I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman one testimony you were all laughing around when the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence you, you, you can see the don't feel bad my friend but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access you can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual but he said I want to start from that kindergarten give that gentleman two three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you you will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here productivity productivity anything that enters your hand multiplies anything that comes around your life increases are we together now everybody say exposure listen to me exposure is not a gift of the spirit in fact exposure is not even a gift of life at all exposure is a system where your horizon 
is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot, God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle Belton, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure. 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 The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, he will translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see in any case i need you to comprehend that's what he did to abraham he kept telling abraham you will be a father of many nations abraham said amen like we're saying and god said i can't work with you you are you are empowering delay in your life and then one time he said abraham come out you have checked around and there is nothing that looks like lift up your eyes see count the stars he had been looking at the stars but he never tried counting them I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three, oh God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one, God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I, I have I've planted something in you that you can now relate with. He says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. But somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? 
everybody say exposure it is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that do you know why because the environment sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity so you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you and then they tell you this is a young man that owns it and subconsciously your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say lord there has to be something about my life but in this environment no matter what level you are you are still a champion you see how bad it is before or after school you are still better than many people before or after being born again you are better than many people you waste your money they say no problem you are better than us there is nothing that challenges you so you need a healthy exposure there are people in their life who never bought cars and the day you say we are trusting God for a car they look at you and say what what kind of nonsense is this must you live with a car no you mustn't but it's better to have a car are we together now yes listen one of the ways that satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex then he will now in he will expose you by himself that's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say my dear let me tell you what this is let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say what is this this is called this this is called that she doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home and the mother says sir is ready help me pour water on the firewood let's let's just conserve it and suddenly there is an agitation but because it was wrongly done she will make up her mind that that experience i will not rest she will find a way of going back nobody sees something better and rests when new wine comes something begins to happen the old wine becomes tasteless is how god expands us many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life you have never really seen a blessed godly person around you please look up look up look up look up don't don't feel insulted but many of us have not had models of correct blessed believers you have seen struggling believers you have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today tomorrow they don't have you have not seen a portrait so when the bible says blessed is the man that fears the lord there's nothing you can you just you just think he says godly is the man you know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages it will use something else to replace it my brothers and my sisters the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference there has to be something that's the reason why men and women of god must challenge themselves even on this wise to become worthy references a ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy a ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people the possibility that you see before you is what you become that's what jacob did to the animals he simulated what he wanted them to become are you getting what i'm saying now many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life the only thing you have heard about a blessed man rich men are crooks rich men are stupid rich men are obsessed with money they are the ones who destroy our country rich men are corrupt people and when you hear that kind of thing your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth so god exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves god and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience i thought all wealthy people hate god i thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks here i'm seeing a man that loves god then you have the opportunity to see his offering you have the opportunity to see his tithe you have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures he will leave you with a mark you will go back and say mama i know we are in this hut but there is a better life egypt i know there's cocoon and there's carrots but there is Canaan 
my mother is Canaan. Let's trust God for grace. And in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. May you be the one to lift your family out of this land. Please sit down. Exposure. Exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart. Are we together? You never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand. Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not luck. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what will discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you sat on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex, just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but... I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene. 
and it was terrible especially being the first son it was it was a tug of war it was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father everything was aggression you bring cold water for him to wash his hand he won't say you are wrong he will slap you you fall with the whole thing then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before how did you manage that situation now please don't you ever see my father and my father is a born again loving man right now he's a healthy and wonderful man are we together now yes i respect and i honor him with my life and forever so don't don't think that honor your father i'm not just he's, a, he's truly a good man one of the most honest people i've seen in my life but he was a victim i have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist everybody is only an executor of his understanding because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body there's only a dead body are you getting what i'm teaching you now yeah and so that life of aggression exposure i didn't want it but that was all i had seen and so subconsciously as i started growing i found out that my approach to life began to reflect that you don't receive willingly alone once you are exposed to a system for a long time it becomes all you know that's why most people that complain about leaders when they get there they do the same thing because while they were complaining they were becoming it too remember animal farm literature students that's exactly what happens to people and so my life started reflecting that i was unusually aggressive i said no 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 something has to happen to my life Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a crook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. And this is where the internet becomes a blessing. You don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself, but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the U.S. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there.
but God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there everybody around you was a bad father a wicked man a bad mother a wicked woman and God can just lead you to one 15 minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies everybody say exposure there's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together number two thank you the second key to productivity please write it down is creativity and innovation creativity and innovation the second key to productivity remember i told you productivity is a weapon you don't just fight by prayer alone you don't just fight by fasting alone your productivity is a weapon as god is exposing you and exposing your mind you are fighting a warfare that you do not know it's a warfare for your destiny while you are exposing yourself you are exposing it for your children for your children's children and then number two creativity write this down what is creativity creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas imaginations and dreams into reality creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas your imaginations and your dreams into reality hmm. i saw this definition and it was so instructive it also involves the act of turning your um, transforming your ideas imagination dreams into reality full stop it also involves perceiving the world in new ways comma finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena it involves perceiving the world in new ways finding hidden patterns making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena look up please the first manifestation of the holy spirit in the bible was not as a revealer but as a creator there was darkness genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and then verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless is the hebrew word tohu abohu confusion and chaos and the bible says the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters because creation recreation was about to start the first manifestation of the holy spirit was as a creative spirit and listen to me if you will conquer the king of tyre and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of god then you must be creative the spirit of invention the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit please hear me any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators there is no reason for competition again creation is the key the ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit please give us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us creativity unfortunately our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep our creativity level in this generation is almost zero thank god for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school quantitative reasoning and uh, what's the other one verbal reasoning this our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind I, i'm not being insulted but you ask a graduate a simple question just something he can think about i mean it's not there at all 
creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize. Like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the Spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new. You go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people. And about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years. Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry but there is a way, there is a spirit in man listen to me carefully the, the employment in any nation is private sector driven there is no nation that the government handles their employment, no government has only limited parastatal are you getting what I'm saying now and because they are working on cutting costs Usually, they will make sure that as much as possible, they cut cost. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people, one of their most successful products. But with that, many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient. Every businessman does business for profits. I hope you know bank is business. Bank is not government property. It's somebody's business. Look at graduates now. All around. There is nothing. Because there is a system. And please listen to what I'm saying. Because when a father does not have something that brings resources. 
and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us rid ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in zaria let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is twenty to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know, no matter how careful you are in this life, twenty to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000 and everybody saying oh yeah oh, now that God has blessed you we were there for you 20,000 divided by 10 so why won't your prayer life be affected why will you be able to pray where will you get the resources to marry no not marry <laughs> watch this where will you get the resources to marry? I'm, not, I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry? You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing, remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity listen to me creativity and innovation there is a spirit in man my brothers and sisters there is a spirit in man there are men and women that must arise let us not pray in tongues for nothing we are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground the world does not understand that language the language that conquers babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee, his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions, uncommon manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this and 
I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Yes. Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you received. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be... This is, this is where, sincerely speaking, I have a little challenge with we men of God. We continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them. It's wickedness. It's a scam. Do you know how available people will be when they are financially free? Financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life. Most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. creativity 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 that God will anoint people to be creative do new things or old things in new ways that you set a pace my brothers and my sisters let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria no it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller but there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. 
Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we use the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood... And I looked, I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you will have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child in the name of Jesus. No, no, I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon. Of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now. 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extramoral lesson. It's a VIP extramoral lesson. And it started like two children, three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character character and then she will play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways and the parents started recommending their circle of influence that's always what happens when you penetrate one circle they will call the others like them to you and like play like play this woman would collect ten thousand naira per month as at the time that i was talking with her she had like 50 children only God knows how much he has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, 
let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation god can put something on your mind something on your mind and change your life change your life i saw a picture on the internet one day the person's cloth they wrote 400 dollars then his his tie they wrote 20 dollars and then his head they wrote zero dollars are we together that's a picture of our generation packaging and there is nothing from the realm of the spirit and i told you that resources only follow productivity is god blessing us i'm already very proud and happy about many of us that god is granting grace not just to hustle but to think this this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything up it's not only power to shake no it must come upon your mind please lay your heart on your head in the next two three minutes and i'd like you to pray and say lord let something come from heaven Zakatoske parakata from heaven oh god a creative idea from the throne room that i will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life please pray please pray Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. Kings. That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, sir, 
I'm a young man, I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers. Flowers. They, to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age are we together I know a woman, a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products. Health drinks, completely organic, 100%. Because the need to live long and live healthy. You see, when you are poor, it's not a concern. Because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this. But by the time God helps you small, you find out that at a level is a serious concern. And this, this woman started selling health drinks. And you know, beautifully packaged. And only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed, I saw it, I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents. Let them take it and let them be blessed. The goal is not far from you. When the spirit of creativity comes on you, you will see what others don't see. It's true. Anything can bless. It depends on how it is served. Are we together? There's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it, even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness. Rebuke excuses. There has to be a way out of it. The warfare that is executed through creativity. Only creative men can survive upon that mountain. There is a way out. There is a way out. There has to be a way out of struggling. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight creativity creativity the third key to productivity one is exposure two is creativity and innovation number three is competence you want to be productive the third key is competence the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results, maintain quality, predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know if you're a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. 
competent is a product of mastery the mastery of the laws that govern that operation predictable competence listen to me when your results are not standardized kings will not come to you kings do not come to a fluctuated result stability for kings mean mastery so when you stabilize and standardize your results whether spiritually intellectually or otherwise you call the attention of kings the leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results you cannot keep fluctuating forever as a man of god as a businessman as a career person there must be a level of standardized results everybody say competence mm. be strict on yourself set a high standard on yourself don't celebrate mediocrity just because you do something small challenge yourself think global think global think global you can start small but let your mind be global are we together I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate the gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys and so they just speak slangs all around and he said no if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people you want them to call your attention then you must pay the price to learn and he says wow he was touched and he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself he went that far and that gentleman today is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's cloth today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist, insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you. And they are noticing the fluctuations around your results. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. 
don't be small oh i'm a chef i'm a chef what do you do just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings challenge yourself are we together now one time a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and i'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him now he asked him i heard recently again to make another set of clothes let me tell you competence is addictive when people meet competent people they don't easily let them go no there are not many competent people in the world you can only complain for a while you will come back be so competent that you become an endangered species I remember years ago a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a uh, what they call these people that makeup artist from Kano and I asked a question I said does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day the wedding day is not the day of trial and error if you are not competent provable competence kings and queens will not call you listen when you become competent you can name your price and the world will still say thank you is God blessing you competence you need to shake off poverty don't just sit down and say oh God um, now that the job is not coming or what I read no God is giving you a mind that can sit down listen koinonia I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced and that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a curse. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly 
by the Spirit of God, say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people are here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come, and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread, and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came you know your impact by what people do around your birthdays that you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed people should be excited and know that my God this blessing to my life what an opportunity to celebrate him there are people today you still look at their grave and their grave is a sermon you can stand on their grave and live inspired he came he saw he conquered productivity the ability to trust god for an innovative spirit listen Turn your ideas to products and services. You are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey. That means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen, one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. Hmm. This is what money cannot buy. Hmm. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, 
there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain, where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the roof. Why am I poor? Why am I suffering the recession? And I, I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says, everybody, go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us who roam to everybody, you touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen, do you know why, I want to be sincere with you, do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? I know many people think he's Buhari, others think he's Jonathan, other people think he's PDP, APC, I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you, something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people. We only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years. The same way to happen to your destiny. I'm in a, a department. They give everybody food free of charge. So I think, let me tell you, you do not generalize impact and success. You must be sure what parts you are contributing. Otherwise, you'll be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person, life must single you out one day. To defend yourself I belong to an anointed ministry great and wonderful we are shaking the world I agree with you a day will come you will stand before the sick apostle I'm not there hey Jimmy I'm not there my head of department prayer ushering decoration they are all not there on that day that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise Life will challenge you. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it, the disciples kept enjoying corporate success. 
until one day when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration, they were happy. They brought an epileptic person. They said, don't worry about Jesus. We are here. Just keep him down. They struggled. They were embarrassed. Nothing happened. Let me tell you. Do you know what causes jealousy? The ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about. You've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons. No, this person cannot be sick. Then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for, before the opening prayer, he's healed. And then the person testifies exactly as it happened. You know how people testify? They will say it the way it happened. May God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable an appetite to be valuable let me tell you how you know you are really valuable when no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver you are exceptionally valuable listen listen I can't remember how much this is how much they bought it but let's assume this is 300,000 just an assumption right assume that this pulpit is 300,000 when they call the price what do you do you look at it, the material, the quality, and he says, okay. If they look at this and say, bring 10 million, you look at it and say, no. That's the same way they rate you. So you say 20,000, they say you are telling the truth. Then you say 100,000, they say for where? Is money free like that? But there are others, they don't even say anything. Their value says any amount, priceless, 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 priceless. And so someone brings 10 million and says, sir, Please don't be offended. It's a privilege for me to do this. May you be such a person. May you be such a person. Hallelujah. Benihin is coming to Nigeria. And the plans that have, in fact, to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again. The Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said, no, 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 no. We are going to come in. Now, he's not only ministering in Lagos. He's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade. Again. Say value. Yeah. When Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is invited, uh, inviting him, he's received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's trolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life? Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain the money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now, let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I set laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no, they have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. 
Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak, they are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It earned you the right here. When we stop, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in a filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Haba, is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people offended my friend we used to eat together but you were not doing the same thing now the person has risen you call the person and a secretary picks hello sir so so and so, so organization please let me talk to him Jare. tell him my name is uh, Ajayi you don't know me again and you are shouting and raking and getting angry May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. 
I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen, can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses make up your mind from today there is something my world can celebrate years ago when i was staying in a little room praying and reading books all my money went to buying books buy the truth and sell it not god you have given me grace for music and worship who can invite me because of the grace i carry don't flatter yourself in mediocrity challenge yourself based on a reference that is global don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes. You sing off key and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing, but vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors. Just by looking at them, you see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then you say, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it yesterday i was studying on diamonds i just decided to study on diamonds i didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the recall in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable. Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane. It will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining and you just take a flight and within one minute you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. I will be a wicked preacher. I will be a wicked man of God to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what I'm doing with my life. And by the grace of God and in all sincerity, that's what has brought me where I am. And I told you, where I am now is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal to you what I'm doing today. Value always precedes manifestation. So when you see a man manifest, that's not his true state. It is his perceived state based on your seeing him now. In business, in ministry, there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works. And they may never find out. There are many people who don't know how this thing works. I'm sorry to say, but look at Zaria as a case study. Almost every business in Zaria, almost, not all, but almost every business in Zaria is tainted by mediocrity, smallness, average. There's, there's nothing world class. There's, there's no touch of excellence in it. We are limited because of our culture. I have my small shop. This is nice. We never learn. Someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you. Then you make it again. 
No, you must learn from other people's mistakes. Are we together? I have hardly seen things in this city and I say it with all humility that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute from our hotels are we together to our restaurant services in fact from the most part they are terrible yet there are many of us seated here if I ask you now what did you say I've been cooking you are the only one who has not eaten the fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it and that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet if food is delicious, we are not stupid people. It means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Competence. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value and then he says now you have prepared yourself there are too many you know the problem with many of us look at me this 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 pressure for recognition i want to know that i'm a ceo i said it i think it was to the school of ministry students people write books after 10 20 years of a track record but in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they're not really my friends, but they're ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, at your level, there are some bishops who are not like you. You should be on TV and radio. I said, I hear. So that I will get to a point where I'm limited and I have to beg for partners. Isaiah 77, give me Isaiah 61. Give me 61 naira or 610 naira. I don't want to do all those things. I don't want to stand on airplane gimmicks. I want a situation where the day koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed and you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year, more than any year put together. Now, please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting. I'm only challenging you in a time we call recession. Say something I do not know. Say it again. Something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport bus services and he called me he said apostle i can't believe this you've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church just at one junction where everybody will wait after one month 
we looked at when they sent the report I said nobody it trekked from wherever you are coming and we've done this without fail not for Friday's program anytime this ministry is holding any program once it is night we're a responsible ministry at any time whether it was planned or not brothers and sisters there is something that is being done this is where I'm taking you to it was not like that our first crusade they were almost locking me because of 150,000 Aaron whereas the money that is circulating now was still there I have learned through pain I have learned through mistakes I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever some of you are about to get married you know you are not ready are we together you already know not by revelation by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer you know that your children are going to suffer how do I know that there is no plan Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord you are not preparing your way there can't be greatness don't be too quick to show forth prepare everybody say prepare prophesy to yourself say myself prepare myself be competent myself work on yourself Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. Colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people. Oh, we were classmates. The same class. The same university. The same this. The, we are both doctors. We are both professors. No, no, no. The Bible says one star different from another in glory. Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability. Say there is a gift. Within me. That is greater than Zaria. Greater than Nigeria. There is an intrinsic value. Within me. That can bless me. That can bless the kingdom. And I will search it out. Hallelujah. There is an intrinsic value. Now, intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent. The only thing you do is to develop it is there. I'll give you an example. Intellectual property is an intrinsic value. You don't refrigerate it. You don't warm it. You don't keep it in a safe, in a bank. It's there, it's there. You've trained your mind, intelligence, intellectual property is there. He's playing this keyboard now. This is intrinsic value. Is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to work first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing, work on it. You are an entrepreneur, work on it. Don't say I'm a CEO. CEO that is not producing results is a sign to sit down. Say I'm a potential CEO. There are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves. I am this and that and that. I'm into real estate, agro, allied products and so on and so forth. We have branches in, in, in Ghana, Benin Republic, Port Harcourt, Lagos, and so on and so forth. And you look at the person who is talking. You ask him, sir, what do you know about real estate? He said, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave me, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry. 
yet they want me to buy their album no i told you last week there are many people who claim they can cook they have restaurants are we together and you start bullying people and say ah shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself one of our school of ministry ladies uh, um, she made one beautiful work just a beautiful artwork the students saw it i mean she's here very fantastic artwork and when i saw it i said my goodness this is excellent i told her improve yourself and monetize your value monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent then you place a price on it are we together now i want everybody to write write three things you know god has put in you that must be developed and deployed please write it down young old write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own don't just write because your neighbor wrote something value value Aaron is here he handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics why because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself the other day i went to his house and i saw a blackboard close to his uh, uh just a little like uh, uh, dining or thereabout and his uh, little office that he has and i saw him writing goals i saw targets i saw plans of action i said this is excellent this person is going to go far please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward that you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you it must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing hallelujah i met a pastor and the pastor told me something he said man of god if you is quite an elderly man he said if you continue going the way you are going you are going to have such an exceptional ministry i said thank you sir i intend to and that's why i seek people like you to add to my life i am not ashamed of my ignorance i'm not ashamed of my limitations and the thing that i do not know there are many things i do not know i know some but there are many others if i knew them i would not be where i am and i humble myself to seek for knowledge i see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others are we together you call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person when can i come and meet you or when can you come and meet me and the person says why you say i have a business proposal i want us to rob minds together sit down with your broke bad attitude and you will never rise never never rise there's so many people who do that why am i challenging you i want you to rise beyond the recession you've heard the testimonies of people this money has not flown anywhere this greatness has not flown anywhere the concept of recession to an individual is a mirage hear me please hear me i understand business i'm not daft i'm not stupid i know what i'm saying the concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform it is when you look at the economy territorially societally then you can say based on the gdp of a nation based on certain indices a nation when it does not meet certain things then there is a, a recession there is inflation or whatever it is but not an individual there has been no time in the bible where famine affected everybody there were there, there has always been exemption those who offer value are the ones who are exempted please hear me what gives you the justification that between today friday 
and next Friday something would have entered your hand or I'm not necessarily just saying money somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless him my life has been transformed what value do you have you see the anointing does two things it activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there it activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift So number one, your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. Greatness, wealth, any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system. It's not just the issue of the will of God. The issue of the will of God as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery. It is clear in the word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter. Thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day, right? That you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a part you have to play. There is a part that I have to play. Huh? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then he says, then, only then, shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success. Success that does not steal away the time of your family. Success that does not steal away your life. Are we together? Give me five, ten minutes. Let me talk a little. Let me take point three a little more. Write this down, please. I know that I've taught a lot about finances, but let me just talk for 5-10 minutes on a few things about our financial life. Number one, let me tell you something. A job alone will limit you. I want, to, I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit. A job alone will limit you. Brothers and sisters, no matter how much of a job you get, no matter how great of a job you get, a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment. Your needs are plenty. Family needs. The average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance. It's capital intensive to live in Nigeria. To send children to school. Almost all of us here, by the time you are a Christian and you are born again, you have commitments to your church, to your group, to your ministry. And part of it is financial commitment. Part of it, there are several things you have to do that take money from you. You are broke. Let me give us a little financial intelligence. We'll always add this. You are broke any time your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira 
probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so he's spinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it just i mean just koinonia alone please activate streams of income take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard you are you are insincere and you are ungodly when you wet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it package yourself work on yourself i work on myself every day i returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as i was i made sure that my daily goals were met please don't you think that it is just the anointing the anointing is there i'm going to talk about it paul said i thank my he says i am what i am by the grace of god he said but this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all i prepare an average of two to three sermons every week it takes time it takes research it takes stayed in the spirit there are other aspects of my life i am involved in what are you doing there is no laziness don't sit down and say oh god when will you change my my situation don't sit down and say who will come and marry me out of this problem nobody at least nobody in koinonia and brothers don't wait and say which lady bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord are we together this is the undoing of africa this is the undoing of many people my neighbors um they bought a few months ago they bought a grinding engine and the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there at once they became relevant in that environment almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to samaru to go and grind beans or whatever they come to them what is their reward the transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please i want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession i am not saying you should be a money monger remember we've done financial dominion so you cannot sit down and say now which business do i do uh -uh. that's a wrong question how do i develop myself to rise to a point of value when you are valuable then now you build a system around that value 
that's what we call business business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people then you receive financial rewards among other things there's nothing mysterious about business building a business is simply having a value converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give very simple but it's not as simple as it sounds the last point rise to a point of value rise to a point of value the last point what is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant the fourth key to rising beyond recession we name the series thrive to thrive does not mean to manage the tribe to thrive means to blossom thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out you see how a plant grows out of the soil and you see it moving regardless of of the strength of the soil it shoots through it and it blossoms that's what it means to thrive. you don't thrive if there are no obstacles you thrive in spite of obstacles the fourth key is an encounter with the anointing Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Sing it one more time, everybody. Anointing fall on me. Anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall. I love what I'm about to share with you I'm telling you because it's something that has changed my life you you see you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing you are amazing them you are amazing you are amazing you are amazing oh oh anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the down the anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent him in your territory the anointing is God's seal of authorization is his authorization upon an individual to represent him the authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity 
to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number three. Now I love this definition. The anointing is an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal, to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here experience possibilities i think the media should do a montage on this experience possibilities it's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe we've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there there are limitless possibilities in god and those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction the grace of god is at work upon the life of an individual the bible is a compendium an unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in god revealed from generation to generation hallelujah i got a testimony recently and um, i'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so i can share it in the open when we went to yola for the last crusade a few months i think a month or two ago we went to Yola. One of the person who was driving me around is a doctor, PhD, you know, with his wife. He's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child. This thing has not worked for them. And he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed. You know, it's been a while they've been married. They're probably following now. And his wife couldn't take in. And, you know, when they were done, we're about to leave. I asked him, I said, what would you want the Lord to do? And then prayed for them. And he sent me a text. I think it was on our way to Bauchi now. On our Kogi, no, no, Bauchi he was on our way to Bauchi. I just got a text. He said, Apostle, the text is still on my phone. He said, I called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said, I think she's three or a month pregnant. Say results. Shout it. Listen, results are evidences that God is alive, not just an evidence that a man is anointed, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. During our dinner, we'll be playing some videos. I hope that the media would consider that. I don't know what their plans are, but I hope that they should incorporate that. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations. And some of you will marvel and wonder. Marvel and wonder at the hand of God and what he can do when a man is anointed. I've said it and I will say it again and again. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. How can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference? It is the very difference. When all is said and done, the grace that comes upon the life of a man. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him. And then he reads on and he says, and in his, in my glory shall his horn be exalted. Listen, let me tell you something. I have come to respect the anointing, not because of what it has done in my life alone. But this ministry you see is a place of possibilities. The testimonies, the tearful testimonies that have come. And it's not just because of Joshua Selman. Take the anointing out of my life and I'm as empty as this chair you see. Are we together? Someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing. Someone's life will rise because of the anointing. Listen, after you've worked on your gift, your gift needs to be anointed. It's one thing to be gifted, but it's your gift anointed. It says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But candle without fire on it cannot give illumination. 
are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the focal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophet went to elisha and elisha said what do i need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that thank you are we together the anointing and then when she got it he now told her, i said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews in verse 38 he said how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed jesus so it's not just that jesus was anointed look at the extent how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then the bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god was with him the anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll no those are just effects of the anointing on the human body and then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation but the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking results results i don't care whether you shake like a leaf results brothers and sisters i just want to praise i lift my hands to say I love you you are everything to me and I exalt your 
Jesus, are you the Messiah? Is it true that the anointing is on you? And Jesus said, all right, watch this. The blind eyes open, the deaf ears hear, and he said, go back and tell John. How do you know a man who is anointed? Results. Results. Don't trivialize results. It's not all about the results. Are you joking? What then is it about? Results. Lives changed. Results. hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that it's the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together results a whole family almost ravaged with hiv that cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed not just one person it's called results brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth you may be criticized but you will never be ignored once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man upon the life of a business satan will raise criticisms why so that your word will not be heard so that you will not be believed and so that people will not be blessed but here's what the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth the truth was buried only for three days after three days it came back to life results results notable results not just results he says the spirit of the lord please give us isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our god and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right or oh, I'm, I'm the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then it says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the holy spirit your life is transformed your mindset is changed you become a leader you become an ambassador of the kingdom then you are now anointed again to reproduce say the anointing there is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing we believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time absolutely so you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band because everything is done with respect to the anointing they believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics they are spirit and life are we together listen please hear me i do not boast to have risen so far compared to where i need to go i am just starting but i can tell you this 
I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gifts and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching, someone will not just hear and say, wow, this was nice. Honestly, when you see me talk like this, I talk from my heart because this is it. You know, sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is. But when someone who has found it says, look, this is what you are looking for. Don't go around and waste your time and come back and say, ah, ah I didn't know it was like this. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Make sure you talk to him while praying. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord. Outside, you can come in. Clear the way for them so they can. I wait on you. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place.
We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I want you to mean business with your destiny. Ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny. Don't worry about the rain. There are people who will direct you strategically. Don't be distracted. <laughs> O bangi chi kai kaya o o ke mama sona ka o bangi chi hey na da ka ka sona ka o bangi chi kai saya o na ke mama sona ka o bangi chi na da ka ka sona ka O bangi chi kai saya bo na ke mama sona ka O bangi chi Hallelujah Prayer point number 1 Father I declare that my mindset must change Lift your voice and pray Pray from the depth of your heart Shabarata ka sodike tele ba 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 Arato so segete barata la kora hasa bara bara. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. listen to me the quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation not every information is needed and useful for your destiny the fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing the fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising the information you are getting must be needed and useful it must be needed and useful I like you to pray and say Lord the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny lift your voice and pray the right knowledge the right information the right knowledge the right information hallelujah hallelujah it's raining but we're still praying hallelujah 
apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord my gift Lord the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost there is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We are praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. Oh yes, I'm rising. Beyond recession, I'm rising. Beyond limitation, there is a gift in me. Embrace Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtah and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says, For darkness, confusion, shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people he said but upon you his glory shall arise verse 3 says gentiles hallelujah gentiles shall come you will not look for them gentiles will come to your light gentiles will come you will not publicize there is an unction there is a gift there is an ability gentiles shall come to your light then their kings to the brightness of your rising it says your gates shall be continually open they will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the gentiles listen i want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift i call them 
into my life lift your voice and pray please be serious everyone in every territory called ordained anointed everyone called to honor your gift your business acumen your intellectual capacity education your skill everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry call them for by the power of the prophetic by the power of the prophetic I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I like us to pray. I like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil, there is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Pray upon my marriage a superior unction an unction that cannot be ignored 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 Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. 
stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions testimonies beyond imagination you can pray it through genuine desire a heart that is thirsty thou son of David have mercy on me thou son of David anoint me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. As I look to you, to you. Affect my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you We are going to pray. I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart. You are going to challenge every door of limitation. See, let me tell you. Honestly, if we are to be truthful with ourselves, there are people, you are not down, but you are not up either. You can move up. When you are up, you know you are there. I like you to pray and say, I challenge limitations. You are a spirit and I speak to you. This season you are living, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism, it's influence. The key, and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, access to kings, access to nobles, 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 access to kings, access to nob
access to men of influence access to custodians of systems hallelujah hallelujah one of the blessings and the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access unusual influence God has given us access to politicians access to governmental figures access to kings access to financial people access to mentors access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success i want you to pray again and say lord the access i need to end struggle bring it to my life bring it to my life lift your voice it's not as hard as we make it influence is powerful influence is powerful please i like you to pray lord i desire influence the capacity to rise to a platform where your name can be heard where your glory can be seen hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord listen the body of jesus was hanging on the cross the body would have remained there indefinitely it was not a prayer warrior that demanded the body a man of influence called joseph of arimathea the bible says he was a noble man a man of influence and he used his access are we together to herod to caesar to demand the body of jesus he was a noble man he had influence he had a virgin tomb he had influence and he said look herod i need the body of this man and he said you have it there are things you have been praying for that influence will give you at a platter of gold are we together i shared with you the testimony years ago listen to me how that somebody was too short to get to nda and they said you are disqualified and then he came back and because he had access to the emir he complained and the emir said they should go back to nda and tell the people that emir yakara which is saying the emir has added his height they should take him that's the power of influence are we together i have gotten certain things in my life on the sheer platform of influence you need it don't let mediocres deceive you that you don't need it that's why somebody can come and bully a church with their land and collect it together with all the lawyers there there is no influence in the military you should have influence somebody that can stand and become a representative imagine if daniel was not in babylon imagine if esther was not in the king's palace imagine if joseph was not in egypt let me show you how men there was a time they wanted to kill paul it was not prayer paul took advantage of his influence will you kill a roman citizen because the issue was too serious if he said i'm an apostle you would have died there he said i'm a roman citizen ah uh -uh. you don't touch roman citizens we have been preached far too long in the body of christ that the desire for influence is carnality no carnality is the influence of things on your relationship to god it has nothing to do with wealth i want to be friends with multi-millionaires i want to be friends with governmental figures so that we can come and say can you give us land for church here and they say ah you please have it protocols have been bypassed in my life protocols have been bypassed in this ministry because god has granted us grace we are friends with the nigerian union of road transport workers we are friends with the police the military 
you name it from any angle there is somebody to speak when a student is victimized on campus there are intellectuals among us there are people who we can speak to oh daddy sir mommy sir please can you help this message let me tell you it's a tragic thing when you are in the place of help and there is no voice to speak sometimes you are in the prison you don't have access to the palace you need somebody who is already in the palace to say no i endorse this person this person is a man of integrity it's not all about what you can do by yourself are we together nigeria that is full of bureaucracy and sentiment you need men and women strategically positioned to help you Matthew Ashimolowo was the first Christian to be allowed in Ghana, Ghana TV, mainstream, to preach. They refused it. The indigenous pastors did everything to do. They refused it. But when he came, because he was connected to somebody who was connected to the government, and they knew that their daily bread was dependent on it, they allowed it. Who has God raised in your life to speak for you? Brothers and sisters, you cannot rise here though. Let me tell you, it's a mystery I'm sharing with you. You need men of influence. It's a class of destiny helpers. Are we together? That somebody can speak to you. Yes, I know the rent is due and they are about to throw you out. But somebody is a friend to your landlord. He can say, please landlord, I know that you are supposed to drive this, but this person is my son. And he say, on grounds of relationship. Do you know, let me tell you, when how you know there is no helper in your life is when you get into trouble you fight alone you pray alone when daniel was in the den darius could not sleep he rose up the next day he said oh daniel has your god delivered you when he said so he said bring him out go and carry all those people throw them in who can punish your enemies who has what it takes to bring to book they that speak against the purposes of god every one of our board of trustees by the grace of God in this ministry is a man or a woman of influence are we together if there are people today the government cannot come and pull them there are churches one of my pastor friends was speaking to me he heads the branch of one ministry in a particular northern city and he said how that they had refused they showed him the letter signed by the governor that they cannot give land is impossible. No matter what you do, they cannot give church land. All the other churches that had it had it seals. But in recent times, no, they will not give it. And a particular denomination in this country, they decided to do an expansion program. And they have six of their churches there. All of them own their land. They influence. Shout it again. Somebody called somebody who said, look, be careful. This seat you are in is for four years. You don't play with, no matter how stupid, no matter how a madman is, he does not enter fire by mistake. You need influence. There are many believers, there are many families that are bullied and there's no one they can run to. There are many men of God that are bullied. They've not, the Bible said, be wise as serpents. You live in an economy, a system that is hostile to anything God. You need influence. Unfortunately, all the people in our lives are like us. We are the most influential persons among them. When God taught me this, I started making friends with billionaires. I'm not looking for their money. Access and influence. Are we together? The property that we want to get, the person said they were, they were giving it to somebody. There are some business persons who came and wanted to get it. But because of influence, no, 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 David. We want to give believers and we want to give this ministry. Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray this prayer, you will struggle alone. You don't have to pay for everything by yourself. Let influence pay for some things for you. One more time, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, connect me to men of influence. Men who fear God, they are men of influence. One recommendation can give you a job. It can give you a job. One recommendation can honor your proposal. Be wise as serpents. 
be wise as serpents be gentle as doves be wise as serpents lift your hands I pray for you in the name of the Lord God of heaven I pray for you sincerely from the depth of my heart number one that the passion that you have for God will multiply a thousand times that the passion you have for God will multiply a thousand times number two I pray for you access to relevant teachings and materials that will reprogram your mind receive it receive that access in the name of Jesus access to relevant resources that will correct wrong thinking wrong conditionings that authorize demons and self-inflicted predicaments based on an incorrect understanding of life I pray that you find access to those materials three I pray for you the gift of God upon my life by grace has opened me up to realms I never dreamt of I pray for you I don't know what gift my God has put in you but hear me brothers and sisters I want you to receive it from the depth of my heart may that gift come alive may that ability come alive may that ability come alive The discipline to refine your gift to a point of flawless global competence. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, there's one of us here. He's in the technical department. He's an expert in IT. He's absolutely good. Absolutely good. And God opened a door for him because of something he did. And he was connected to HP, their headquarters office. And they saw what he did. It was almost unbelievable that a Nigerian can do this. This gentleman I'm talking about is graduating 2018. But his employment letter from HP is already in his hands. I think it's about $180,000 per annum in his hands. Now, he's here listening. It is not your background. It is not your background. Believe me when I tell you, it is not your background. I want us to pray. There are lecturers here. There are academicians here who should not be at the level they are. Are we together? Some of our loved ones should not be there. There are some of us who have graduated, but it's as if, it's as if you are carrying a piece of paper around. You are just ready for anything because of frustration. I pray for you. Whoever has been anointed by God, to have the discernment to recognize your value and to not only celebrate it but to reward it I command them into your life right now I decree and declare that they come into your life right now every platform you need to rise to for your grace to be appreciated I command that that way is made straight for you and finally I pray for you there is an anointing that distinguishes men that grace that makes the difference that puts a supernatural touch upon all you do so that it is it is inexplainable but undeniable I pray for you in the name of Jesus that fresh grace may it come upon your life may it come upon your business may it come upon your organization May it come upon your ministry. May it come upon your certificate. May it come upon your job. In the name of Jesus. We have in this ministry with God a covenant of exemption. A covenant of exemption. That when men say there is a casting down. For us as a family of faith. We say that there is a lifting up. Not to scorn what is happening. But it's a mystery that God has shown us. The mystery of Goshen and Egypt. I pray 
that that covenant of exemption that is upon this ministry may it be upon your life all through this ember months I pray you are exempted from accident you are exempted from death you are exempted from failure I pray for you quarter to shame may the God that I serve arise for you let no man have to say where is your God may he arise and prove himself hallelujah our time is gone the rain is over but just give me one minute I want to pray the Lord showed me a vision and we must pray hallelujah hallelujah the Lord showed me a vision and in that vision I saw blood I saw blood dripping there are several people who have had all kinds of visions now we are responsible people if God has made us custodians of a territory we must make sure that within the limits of our jurisdiction the purposes of Christ is enforced not necessarily in Zaria remember I've taught you about the body it's not about koinonia it's about kingdom if koinonia is safe and the body is destroyed the kingdom has suffered it's not about my church my pastor Joshua Selma no are we together the pain of the body the body is still the bride of Christ we are going to pray in one minute the festive period is coming to go and the ember months this morning I was lying down and I saw something Oftentimes I see these things and then I just pray. But this was very serious. I saw like lice, you know, teeth that plants of this. Like somebody just fetched them and pour, poured it over a territory. That's what I saw. And the moment I did that, I remember the book of Proverbs. They lock in hiding and they say, um, how, is, how did they put it now? We will not sleep until they are destroyed bloodthirsty spirit that makes sure people have all kinds of accidents, the spirit of violence, you find out that people's bodies itching them just to fight and instill violence it's within our power as ambassadors of the kingdom it says that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it said they shall prosper who love thee for Zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be silent until her glory rises of his she shall be like a royal diadem, a turban. We are going to pray. Stretch your hands to the north, south, east, and west and prophesy peace. First in Zaria, go ahead. Let's contribute our quota to speaking peace. Every church in Zaria is safe. Everybody in Zaria is safe. Christian Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us one you hear kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.